Hi, winners. When we left Towers Falling, um, Sabine had left Ben's house with tears in her eyes. And uh, anyone wonder why? I think we'll find out. Some of you probably already know, but poor Deja doesn't. She's just trying to find out the answers, answers to so many questions. So I'll pick up right where we left off. Snacks are nice. Lita rubs her eyes and extends her arms. Dora hugs her and clasps Ray's hand. I'll get the stroller, I call as they head towards the kitchen. Ray skips. Lita yells, Snackies! I don't move. I feel overwhelmed and confused. Ray and Lita are happy. Sabine's gone. Me? I'm sad. Sitting up, Ben looks at me, dull-eyed, his face not so pleasant. You really don't know, do you? What, I ask, not hiding how miserable I feel. I didn't mean to make Sabine cry. What did I do wrong? Wow, you really don't know, do you? Ben slips into the chair, taps his keyboard, and a picture magically fills the screen. Two tall, gleaming silver and glass towers. Two tall towers touching the clouds, reflecting sunshine, shimmering rainbows, and diamond-shaped light. Arizonans were far away from what happened. You're a New Yorker. I thought you'd know more. More what? Deja, don't you know what they're teaching us? Where our assignments are going? I don't speak. Frustrated, Ben sighs and double clicks the mouse. Terrorists attacked the Twin Towers on 9-11. Except our teachers are taking baby steps, teaching pieces, treating us like we're five instead of 10. And the screen comes alive. The images aren't moving, but I can see one tower is ablaze. There's a gaping hole high up like soaring. Flying dragons had attacked the building, leaving a jagged tear of broken glass, bent metal, and concrete. Smoke, white, gray, and pure black streams and billows. Flames, yellow, orange, and red bubble and lick. That can't be real, I think. Click play, Ben says, shutting the bedroom door. I don't want to see it again. I'm not really sure I want to see it either, and I sit in Sabine's middle chair. I can tell it's a disaster, a horrible disaster. One tower is on fire. What happened to the other? <sighs> is that why Sabine cried? All I have to do is tap the space bar for the video to come alive, so I tap. Smoke grows clouding the silver building and blue sky. Flame streak, it's horrible. There's no sound, but I know there must be people inside the tower hurt and screaming. How come I didn't know? Right across from Brooklyn, something left a gaping hole in the tower. I lean forward. No sound makes the moving images scarier. High up, not even where birds fly, there must be wind sounds. Inside the building, folks must be coughing and choking from smoke. Fire would be roaring and snapping and crackling. A plane, a huge jet, a silver bird is flying, flying straight towards the second tower. I grip the bottom of the chair. No, I scream, stop, stop. Crash into the building, sliding, ripping a diagonal line through metal, concrete, and glass. The plane is inside the building, breaking apart, exploding, melting, burning furniture. No, I scream and I bang the keyboard to get the video to stop. I turn away from the screen and look out Ben's window. Oh, it's beautiful. Birds, trees, sky, and clouds. What would it be like having a plane crush through like a missile, destroying everything? I don't take the subway. I want to walk. Ray's quiet, holding on to the stroller, popping potato chips into his mouth when we come to a stop. Lita has fallen back asleep. I should wake her. She'll be up all night, meaning I'll be up all night, as she twists and turns. I should tell Ray, stop eating, you'll get a stomach ache. But all I can see in my head 
is the plane slamming, two towers burning. I look up around me. Brooklyn doesn't have such big buildings. But that doesn't stop my imagining. Any second it could happen here. I should have let Dora and Ben walk us home. I remember her hugging me, smelling of roses. She scolded Ben, you're not the teacher. It's okay, Dora. Ben knows I don't like not knowing stuff. Sorry, Deja. Ben offered his fist and I bumped it. Then Quickie whispered, it was terrorists, Muslim terrorists. And that's why Sabine's upset. The words strike like they never did before. Before the words were flat. But now I hear them and I understand in a new way. I maneuver the stroller across the street, tilting Lita back to get the wheels onto the sidewalk. I mean, I know about terrorists. America's been fighting them in Iraq. But terrorists and the two towers? How could I connect what I didn't know? Nobody told me. Why would I need to know? It's history. I blink. Moving pictures keep flickering inside my brain. Fire, smoke crumbling walls, shattering glass. History is alive, especially if there's video. I look at Ray. He's eating chips like there's a hole in his stomach. Would I tell Ray about the towers? It's too scary and he's too little. It happened 15 years ago in 2001. By the time Ray's my age, 10, I'll be 16. The towers will have been gone for 22 years. Why care? It doesn't matter to me, not day to day. But then I see the whiteboard circles, country, state, city, school, classmates, friends, family. It happened here in my country, in my state, right across the river near my neighborhood. Sabine's Muslim. She's not a terrorist. Why doesn't her family feel safe? My head hurts. I don't want to think anymore. Like shutting off lights, I want my thoughts to stop. I want the burning towers out of my head. Avalon looks like a jail, but I wouldn't want terrorists to bomb it. People live here too. Family, social groups, my family. Ray and me push through the door. Some folks move aside. Others just sit there. I've got to push. I turn backwards and pull the stroller up the steps. Ray tries to lift the bottom so it doesn't clang as much. He's not too strong and lead is kind of heavy. Thanks, Ray, I say when we get to the top of the stairs. Ray, squeals Lita awake since the first bump. Deja! I open our room's door. Ma and Pop are sitting on the bed holding hands. It feels good to see them. They seem happy. Did you have a good time? Ray and Lita did. Worried, Ma looks at me and I shrug. She doesn't ask. Ma hides her feelings. It's gotten worse at Avalon. She taught me to hide my feelings, too. Pop's relaxed, smiling. Maybe the doctor gave him medicine? We should get washed. Get to the showers before everyone else does, said Pop. I'll take little man. Ray clings to Pop. Pop gathers fresh pajamas from a box. He opens our door, then stops and looks back like he's forgotten something. I love you, B. He steps back inside, hugs and kisses me. Wow, I almost cry. Instead, I blurt. Oh. I didn't know the planes hit the two towers. What? Happiness slides off Pop's face. A good place for our word countenance. He looms over me. Ben's got a computer. One plane hit, then another hit the towers. And you are never going there again. Do you hear me? But wait, he's my friend. He's my homework partner. I don't care. Calm down, Jim. She was bound to find out. Guilty like, Ma looks at me. Pop pulls Ray back into the room and slams the door. He's stomping, thundering mad. School should leave it alone. Kids need to learn, Ma keeps repeating. 
not this, and Pop spins towards me. You're too young, you're too young to know. I'm old enough, I shout, the school's teaching me. And stooping, Pop grips my arms. Ma tries to calm him. You're too young to know about, Pop swallowed. You're too young to know about the towers falling. What kind of school are you going to? It's a good one, says Ma. The best she's ever gone to. I don't care. She's out. I want her transferred. Another school. Pop, you can't. I like my school. I like Ben. I like Sabine. I like Miss Garcia. You're my child, and I'll say what you learn or don't learn. You're too young to know about terrorists. You're too young to know about the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers, but I'm 10. Until you're 18, you're under my roof. You'll do as I say. Well, this isn't your roof. And Ma gasps. Pop is stunned, looking like he's going to fall down. I'm sorry I back talked. I'm sorry I said it. Ray and Lita are frightened, clinging to Ma. Ma, her face is frozen. She reaches out to comfort Pop. Me, standing on one side of my family and all of them on the other side, I'm all alone. There's not even a spare room to cry in. No one says anything. I'll take Ray and Lita showering, I say, picking up Ray's pajamas, gathering nightgowns for Lita and me. Come on. Ray and Lita don't want to go with me. I've scared them. I know. Two, given a choice, they'll always want to be with Pop and Ma instead of me. Deja? Yes, Ma. Pop's curled on the bed now, holding his stomach, his face buried in the pillow, and Mom tucks his sheet. She doesn't say it. I answer. I know. Make sure Ray's safe in the shower. He can come into the girl's shower. I'll punch anyone who complains. Come on. Ray and Lita drag their feet, holding their hands. I tug them out the door and down the hall. I hate my life. Poor Deja. Poor Pop. Poor Ma. Poor Lita and Ray. That's a tough day. But poor Deja, not understanding the towers and yet it seems her whole class does so i asked you today in the slides who's your favorite character in towers falling and what have you learned about them and what makes them your favorite so don't just throw down shallow answers go deeper tell me what you're thinking and what you're seeing and what you're imagining what you're wondering our thinking stems are behind me you see those? I'm thinking, I'm feeling, I'm sensing, I'm wondering. Those are the things I want to know, your deeper thoughts about the characters. So, do some great thinking, write me some great responses, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.